Hi there. My name is Aaron Lanterman. I'm a professor of electrical and computer engineering at Georgia Tech. And this is the schematic for the Ross compressor as found on the Fuzz Central website. There is a lot of fantastic information on the Fuzz Central website, so I recommend you spend some time checking it out. Last year, JHS Pedals rebooted the Ross brand, and unfortunately, this wound up not going well for them, and they wound up closing the brand. Josh Scott did a video on lessons learned that I suggest you check out, and I have some thoughts on that, but if I talk about that, I'll talk about that another time. There is some auxiliary drama I have some thoughts on, but again, if I share those thoughts, I'll do that on another occasion. Today, I want to focus on the circuit. The Ross compressor is by far the most well-known of the Ross circuits, and I think it's the basis for the compressor circuits for some other well-known brands. The mods in blue are by RG Keen, the mods in red are by Mark Hammer, and the mod in green is by the Fuzz Central article author. Let's see, there's a resistor divider here that creates a bias voltage to be used elsewhere in the circuit, and that's going to be 9 volts times 27 divided by 56 plus 27, so around 3 volts. So if you have an op-amp-based circuit, you would usually have some resistors here that are the same, creating a 4.5 volts, but this is a little bit less. The 2.2 mega ohm resistor added in the front here creates a path to ground. So if you don't have something plugged in here and charge builds up on the cap, that charge has a place to go instead of building up. So you can avoid pops when plugging in a cord. So the first thing we hit is this common collector amplifier, also known as an emitter follower. So this is acting as a voltage buffer. We then get to the heart of the circuit, which is a CA3080 operational transconductance amplifier. OTAs are not operational amplifiers. They're a unique beast. I discuss OTAs extensively in my EC4450 Analog Circuits for Music Synthesis class, and you can find lectures relating to those things here on YouTube. One thing that OTAs and regular operational amplifiers have in common is that they have voltage inputs. But one primary difference is that while the output of a regular operational amplifier is a voltage, the output of an OTA is a current. So here, this 150K resistor is turning that current back into a voltage. Standard op amps are designed to have an insane amount of gain, so you use negative feedback to control the gain. OTAs, on the other hand, have a sane amount of gain. So like here, you'll often see these used in an open loop mode. What makes them interesting is that they have a third input that's a current input that controls the amount of gain. So this OTA gives us the variable gain element we need to make a compressor. The output of the sidechain circuit that I'll talk about later is buffered by Q5, which forms an emitter follower. And interestingly, the lower supply voltage for this emitter follower is basically set by the voltage at pin 5, this current control input. If we check out the 3080 datasheet, we see that there's a current mirror sitting at the current control input. And this is a pretty simple current mirror, so there's just a diode drop between the current control input and the negative rail voltage being fed to the OTA. And here that's going to be ground. So the input here is probably sitting around 0.65 or 0.7 volts. So the current flowing into the OTA that controls the gain is going to be the voltage at the wiper of the sustain pot minus that 0.65 or 0.7 or thereabouts volts divided by this 27K resistance by Ohm's law. Now, higher control currents. Here, equivalently, higher voltage at the wiper gives you higher gain in the OTA. Put a pin in that. And notice changing the setting of the sustain pot lets you change how much of the voltage at the emitter of Q5 is getting through in this feedback loop. As an aside, if you don't have a 3080 handy, you might try building this with an LM13700. The 13700 is very much like a dual version of the 3080. 
There is a subtle difference in the current control input circuitry. If we take a look at the schematic here, we'll see that there's a more complicated current mirror. So there's actually two diode drops at the current control input. So the input here is sitting more around 1.3 or 1.4 volts instead of 0.65 to 0.7 volts. Although I doubt that subtle difference would have much of an effect on how the circuit performs. So the voltage at the output of the OTA, which was originally a current that gets turned into a voltage by this 150K resistor, is buffered by Q2, and then we get two versions of that particular signal. This Q2 is acting as a combination of a common collector amplifier, aka a voltage buffer, so we get the voltage buffer down here. And then it's also acting as a common emitter amplifier. So we get a version of the signal up here at the collector. And the gain of that amplification stage is going to be approximately 10K, the collector resistor, divided by 10K, the emitter resistor. So that has a gain of one, or I should say an inverting gain of one. You could say a gain of minus one. So I get the original signal and a negated version of the signal. And to be clear, I'm talking about the small signal voltages at these particular nodes. Of course, these will be at different DC bias points. But that doesn't matter because we have these coupling capacitors here that will be blocking DC. This structure where you have a combined common emitter and common collector amplifier is referred to as a cathodyne phase splitter or a concertina phase splitter. You'll often see this kind of structure in tube amplifiers where the different outputs of it will drive different inputs of a push-pull output stage. So we have an original copy of the signal coming into the base of Q4, and we have an inverted copy of the signal coming into the base of Q3. Now, the way this is drawn, it might make you think that this is some kind of differential amplifier. It's not. Notice both of these emitters are grounded, and they're sharing a collector resistor here. And this particular mod lets you choose the particular collector resistance according to this switch. It's really best to think about this as just two common emitter amplifiers in parallel. For now, pretend this giant capacitor isn't here. Let me draw an original signal over here like this with an upward going hump and a downward going hump. And then let me draw the inverted signal over here with a downward going hump and then an upward going hump. Notice there's something weird about the biasing here. This is not biased to operate in a linear mode. If I look at this here, I see that we're biased at ground at the base, but this emitter is grounded. If I was going to bias this at ground at the base, I would need a negative voltage supply over here. So this downward going hump is going to get chopped off. And this downward going hump over here is going to be chopped off. So the output currents of Q3 and Q4 are basically being added by Kirchhoff's current law and being converted back into a voltage. And so I wind up with something that looks like this at the output if I input a sine wave. And really, this isn't a precision rectifier. It probably looks a little more something like this. I'm exaggerating the effect because we need to get enough voltage at the base to actually turn on this base emitter junction. Now, this circuit on its own, that's like a rough rectifier. It's roughly taking an absolute value. It will show up in pedals under the name octave fuzz. But this circuit has an additional feature. This giant capacitor here, that's going to filter out the signal to give us something like an average value. So that's the detector. Now remember that common emitter stages have an inverting characteristic. So if you're not playing loudly enough to turn on these base emitter junctions, there's no current flowing through these collectors, so there's no voltage being lost across these resistors, and you wind up with this full 9 volts sitting here at the base. So you wind up with a big voltage sitting here at the wiper, and you wind up with a lot of current flowing here, and this OTA has a lot of gain. But as you start to play louder and louder, you do turn on these junctions. You're able to get some current flowing through these resistors. And so the voltage down here at the base of Q5 is going to be less than 9 volts. And we wind up with a lower voltage here, less current here, and less gain. So that's how the compressor operates. 
One other thing I should mention about the OTA circuit is that this trim pot is probably designed to help you trim out non-ideal effects, namely DC offsets in the OTA behavior. The final audio output is taken from the non-inverting output of the concertina stage through this volume pot. What is the input impedance of the pedal? Well, if we take the input impedance from the input jack, it's going to be this 2.2 million ohm resistance in parallel with the input impedance seen looking into here. Now, that 2.2 m resistor, that's really big. So let me just focus on this resistance here. So for small signal analysis, I short this capacitor. So I'll see 10K in series width. So I'll add this 470K and that 470K resistor. Well, let's see, I really should get out the graphics tablet if I'm going to do this. Anyway, this 470K resistor is going to be in parallel with the impedance scene looking into the base of Q1, which I'll label R, I, B, 1. Now, if we want to briefly assume that R, I, B, 1 is infinity, we get an upper bound on the input impedance, which is 480K. Of course, there is going to be some current flowing through the base of Q1, so it's going to be lower than 480K. Now, what's R, I, B, 1? Let's go to Marshall Leach's EC3050 Analog Electronics website, click on BJT Formula Sheet, and here I have RIB, the resistance looking into the base, and let's scroll down here. So I have RIB is equal to the base spreading resistance Rx, which we usually assume to be zero, plus R pi, which is the intrinsic dynamic resistance looking into the base of the BJT on its own, plus 1 plus beta times the equivalent resistance seen looking out of the emitter. And the only thing we see looking out of the emitter is this resistance 10K. So RTE in that expression equals 10K. Now our pi is equal to VT divided by IB. IB is the current flowing through the base, and VT is the thermal voltage. Now VT does depend on temperature, but we usually take it to be around 25 or 26 millivolts at room temperature. Now, in order to get the bias current IB, I can write a Kirchhoff's current law equation. Looking at a DC circuit, I open up the caps, and I'll draw a Kirchhoff's current law loop going from VB down to ground. So I could say that VB is equal to the current loss across these 470 km resistors. So that's going to be 940 K times my current IB. And let's see, let me put some parentheses around this 940 K to make that a little clearer. And then I'll add the voltage loss across the base to emitter junction, which we usually assume to be about 0.65 or 0.7 volts. And then I'll add to that the voltage loss across that 10K resistor at the emitter. And let's see, that needs to be times the emitter current according to Ohm's law. And let's see, the base current, I could write that as the collector current divided by beta. Let's see, I'm trying to do this with the trackpad, so this isn't terribly easy. I should have gotten out the graphics tablet, but that's a pain. Let's see, IE is going to be the collector current divided by alpha. So I can substitute these things in, solve for IC, and then solve for IB, or you can rearrange this equation in different ways. If there's any part of the circuit you would like me to go into in more detail, leave a comment below. Or if there's other interesting pedal circuits you think I should take a look at, leave a comment below. If you're wondering where that RIB formula for the resistance seen looking into the base came from, you can check out this lecture titled Base Thevenin Equivalent Circuit from my EC3400 Analog Electronics class. And I highly recommend you check out these videos JHS Pedals made about the story of Ross Pedals.